This is lesson 8-7, fractions greater than 1, the parent help video for grade 3 everyday math. The first vocabulary word we're going to talk about today is a mixed number. And a mixed number is a number made of a whole number and a fraction. So for example, a mixed number could be something like 1 and 1 half. Or it could be 2 and 3 fourths. Or 5 and 9 twelfths. These are all mixed numbers because we have at least a whole, at least one whole, and then we have a fractional part of another whole. So one of the kids asked the question, one of the kids asked the question, so one is basically the biggest number in the fraction world. And I would agree with that. One is basically the biggest number in the fraction world. So if we have, if we have one whole, Okay, we can't have any more than this whole for this number because then it becomes one and it goes into whole numbers. Okay, I can break this whole up into as many parts as I want to. Okay, as many fractional parts as I want to. And let's just say it's broken up here into eight parts. All right, eight out of eight parts are shaded. So I've shaded one whole. All right, so basically the most I could get out of this one figure would be one. All right, and I really liked the way he said it. He said that one is basically the biggest number in the fractional world. Okay, so that was an excellent uh, perception of that. Can we have more than one whole? Yes, we can. How do we have more than one whole? Well, this is how it would look in real life. Your family orders three pizzas. Okay, you don't just order one pizza, maybe you have a big family, or maybe your family's just really hungry. Okay, your family's going to order three pizzas. So as you can see, we have three holes now, all right, but let's split all these pizzas up into eight parts each, so that it's easy for us to talk about how much we have all together here. All right, how much we have all together now, we have eight here, we have eight out of eight here. And we have 8 out of 8 here. Okay, all of these are going to equal a whole. No matter what, they still equal a whole. Yes, we have three holes all together. We have three pizzas all together. But they still equal one whole each. Now let's say your family ate this whole pizza. And then your family ate this whole pizza. But by the time they got to the third pizza, your family was kind of full. So they just ate this much of that pizza. This is how, we gonna, this is how we're going to get mixed numbers. Okay, so how much did your family eat? Your family ate two whole pizzas and one two-eighths of another pizza. So that's how you could get more holes um, and fractions to go with that. And as students go on, they'll be able to see, well, I ate two holes and then two-eighths of another pizza. I also ate how many pieces? Let's see, I ate eight pieces. And eight pieces, that's 16, 17, 18 pieces. Okay, I ate 18 pieces that were broken into eighths. All right, I ate 18 eighths. So in the case that the numerator is bigger, right, than the denominator, which would be smaller, this is going to mean that there's more than one, that there's more than one whole. Usually we see the fractions that we've seen so far, it's just been a small number on top and a big number on bottom. All right, if we end up with a big number on top and a small number on bottom, that means we have more than one, okay? But the focus today is on this piece here, on the mixed numbers and what the mixed number actually means. And the mixed number is when we have at least one whole, sometimes more than one whole, and then another fractional part of that whole. So we want kids to be able to shade fractional parts of regions to represent fractions that are greater than one. So basically we want them to look at the three pizzas and be able to shade this much of it. Um, we want them to model and name mixed numbers and fractions. And we want them to also continue to identify equivalent fractions. And also to be able to use lines of symmetry to divide figures into equal parts, um, which are things that we've worked on so far. 
Um, as far as how you can support this at home, again, just continue talking about fractions in your daily lives, whether it's at dinner or it's at the sports game or it's at the grocery store with your money and how much you're buying, how much you've eaten, how much you have left. Um, basically, any chance you have to break things up into parts, cooking is also another great way. Have kids practice writing mixed numbers. Have them write down how much pizza you ordered. Have them write down how much pizza they ate, how much pizza did you eat. Um, add it all together and see what you guys um, can come up with. But again, please keep using these fractional words at home and um, just keep practicing. Fractions can be tricky, but it, the, more, uh, the more real life experiences kids have with fractions, the easier it will be to understand what's actually happening with fractions. So this is lesson 8.7, fractions greater than one, the parent help video for grade three everyday math.